kinder all participants will be in listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask question after the presentation concludes should you need assistance during the conference call please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone please note that this conference is being recorded i now hand the conference over to mr nikhil kandoi thank you and over to you sir thanks sujin good morning all on behalf of jm financial institutional securities i welcome you all to epaf day result q1 fy25 earnings conference call today we have with us management represented by mr bajrang bothra chairman and whole time director mr ajay singhania managing director and ceo mr sanjay singhania whole time director and mr rajesh mittal cso i would like to thank management for giving us the opportunity to host this call now i would like to hand over the floor to management post which we can open the floor for q and a thank you and over to you sir thank you i am bajrang bothra mm -hmm. Uh, and good morning everybody welcome to our earnings conference call to discuss the performance of the first quarter of the financial year 2025 in the interest of some of the people who are new to the company let me first start by giving a brief overview of the company epac durable limited is the second largest air conditioned original design manufacturer in india in terms of number of indoor and outdoor units manufactured in fiscal 2023 through its odm journey route our journey started in 2003 when we started as an oem for rdc brands over the years we have consistently grown by adding new customers increasing our capacities and backward integration the expertise of epac durable lies in manufacturing a diverse portfolio of room air conditioners in small domestic appliances which we call stas We cater to all aspects of room air conditions and SDA value chain, including extensive ODM and OEM service across our product line. We are a customer-centric company where business is driven by a focus on continuous innovation and operational efficiency. EPAC Durable works jointly with customer team and customizes the product according to different client requirements. Our strong manufacturing and design capabilities, including developing, designing, and manufacturing of room ACs of various designs and technical specifications, further the current RSP product offering enables the company to perform more customization to RSP brands in terms of completely built-up units of ITUs and ODUs separately as well. Our integrated manufacturing facilities help us manage operational costs and logistics efficiently. in line with our focus on bringing in operational efficiency our manufacturing operations involve a degree of automation which reduces the margin of error and manual inefficiency our manufacturing facilities are strategically located to facilitate product transportation to customers across india we have three manufacturing facilities the first one in dehradun uttarakhand second in bhiwadi rajasthan and the recently operationalized facility at sri city in andhra pradesh we strongly believe in staying ahead of the curve and the key role that r&d plays in product development we have four dedicated r&d centers and close to 70 plus employees in r&d team our r&d activities focus on development of new products optimization of existing products and manufacturing methods process improvement environmental protection and energy efficiency With the help of our R&D, we have registered out one patent, filed a couple of them, and also have numerous design decisions in India. Due to this strong operational capability, EPAC Durable today is one of the key OEMs for major brands in the country. We are also constantly expanding our product offerings in both room ACs and small domestic appliances, and have also invested heavily in expanding our capacities and capabilities. to cater to the growing demand in terms of new product launches we have already launched air coolers in january 2024 and we we plan to launch fully automatic washing machines room oil heaters air fryers tower fans induction water heaters and air dryer in the coming quarters apart from this we have a highly experienced board of directors with two nominee directors from icic venture fund and a firma capital and other independent directors now i will request our cfo mr rajesh kumar mittal to brief you on the financial highlights 
after which our MD and CEO, Mr. Ajay D.D. Singhania, will brief you on the key operational highlights. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Very good morning, everyone, and welcome to the earnings call. Let me give you some of the key financial highlights for the first quarter of the financial year 2024-25. The revenue from operation stood at rupees 774 crore, which increased by 77% on year-on-year -year basis. The EBITDA was reported. Ladies and gentlemen, we have lost the management connection. Please stay connected while we reconnect them. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the management connection back on call. Are you ready for the disruption? Yes, sir. You can continue now. Yeah, please. I'm just repeating few words. The revenue from operations is stood at INR 774 crore, which increased by 77% on year-on-year -year basis. The EBITDA was reported around 52 crore which also increased by 77% on year on year, with the EBITDA margin reported at 6.68%, remaining flat on year on year basis. The net profit was rupees 23 crore as compared to rupees 9 crore in the first quarter of the previous financial year, which represents a significant increase of 169% on year on year. Profit after tax margin for the quarter is to at 3.02%. Now I would request our Managing Director from CEO, Mr. Ravi D.D. Singhania, to brief you on the operational highlights. Please, sir. Thank you, Rajeshji. Uh, good morning, everyone. I am pleased to announce that our CCT facility is now fully operational across all product lines. This milestone marks a pivotal moment in our expansion effort and reinforces our commitment to meeting the growing demands of our customers. It is also one of the main driving factors of the exceptional year-on-year -year growth during this quarter. Apart from the addition of new customers and introduction of new products, which blossom the revenues as well, our product remains product business remains a cornerstone of our success, contributing 98% of our total revenues in Q1 FY25, representing a robust growth of 77% year over year. The AC product revenue contributing 86% of our total product revenue and achieved an impressive year-on-year -year growth of 82%. Overall, it has been a very healthy and encouraging quarter driven by a combination of market dynamics and our expansion plans. With this, we can now open the floor for QA session. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Aniruddha Joshi from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, and uh, uh, Ajayji, uh, uh, congrats for a really great set of numbers uh, as well as the acquisition. Uh, so just on the acquisition, if you can uh, elaborate a bit more on the company that uh, we plan to acquire. So I, as I understand now, it will be a 50% holding for EPAC. So whether it will be first uh, consolidated or it will continue to be accounted as a joint venture itself, point one. Uh, secondly, 
uh, what is the profitability of this company because uh, whatever data we could get uh, based on that it is still in uh, investment mode or in uh, red uh, till fi 23 so how do we see the profitability in fi 24 q1 fi 25 as well as going forward as well and uh, secondly if you can elaborate a bit more on the uh, business of the acquired company uh, the bldc motor so how do you see the market and now post this uh, fans uh, do we cater to fan segment as well and uh, which are the key customers uh, etc uh, on that yeah yeah thanks thank you nirj and thanks um, so this the company uh, ipavo which is currently an associate of uh, epec durable where in our current investment is 26% and 74% is being held by uh, rrwl ramratna bias limited so going forward the plan is to decrease our uh, equity from 26% to 50% uh, so this is a strategic investment for epec durable because uh, ipavo is a motor company which is in the business of manufacturing motors the company was started uh, two and a half three years ago with an intent to develop motors so yes you are right that currently the uh, the pack and the margins of the company are not significant because the last two and a half years were devoted to developing products so uh, in last two and a half years the product have been developed in a test and pilot setup and now going forward we, we are planning a, a greenfield uh, manufacturing facility for this pavo which is being uh, which is now under current and the construction at biwari very close to the epec durable uh, biwari facility so the new facility will be operational by uh, end of this year so around november and we will be ready uh, for operations with mass production so the good thing is uh, all the products which were envisioned have now been developed test marketed and also uh, uh, pilot production has been done at our test facility and supplies had commenced in last quarter so we we are now ready to uh, uh, get into a uh, completely new setup with increased capacity and and, and mass production scale so the market for this yes uh, which we are in the currently we are in the business of developing pc motors in this particular company ipavo but uh, the product segments which have already been developed is the bldc motors for air conditioners the bldc motors for ceiling fans and also hvls fans so um, these are the three product segments which have been currently developed and going forward we also plan to get into the other motors both the induction motors and universal motors as well as the for fractional horsepower motors so the plan the plan of the company is to really now scale up the operations and business in the uh, next three to four years consolidated and consolidated okay. now become a 50 50 gd between both the groups uh, between epec durables and ramratna wires rwi wherein the consolidated results yes uh, there will not be any line by line consolidation then for either of us it will be at the heavy uh, account gd account only yeah. okay understood understood so so how is the uh, management of this company means uh, whether uh, now we we getting 50% stake it will be uh managed by epac or it will continue to have its own separate uh, uh, management uh, fully uh, supported by the ramratan group as well as epac or uh, how how we should uh, read that and again is there any cross sales uh, from ipavo to epac uh, uh, or so Yeah. So the management will be a joint management, 50-50 equity, 50-50. So it's a joint management, equal equal management from both the sides. And yes, there will be professional management for day-to-day operations. That's on the management side. And uh, so this company, Ipavo, uh, for especially for air condition motors, yes, that would be one of the customers. So there will be some uh, related party transition to that extent. But yes, uh, the, uh, since this is a motor company, especially, so we are open to sell. Uh, I mean, we we are it, we will be catering to almost all the customers. Okay, so uh, indicatively, EPAC as percent of sales of Ipavo would be uh, any indicative number. It is difficult to give numbers. Our priority will be to serve the market first. So, but EPAC, I mean, it, 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 it will be an arms and business. So, it it will depend um, on the EPAC's buying team, sourcing team, how they want to uh, allocate the share between uh, Ipavo and the other uh, suppliers. No, no. So I'm uh, obviously means we will be focusing on external customer. But let's say uh, FI24, the historical figure. Uh, w- w- what will be the uh, EPAC as percent of total sales of uh, let's say Ipavo? So FI24, there was there was there was hardly any purchase from Ipavo. So uh, in terms of motor buying itself, if we envision, I think 
we would be targeting anywhere between 40 to 50 percent of EPEX motor buying from Nipavo. Let's put it this way. Okay, okay, sure. So that's uh, pretty helpful. Uh, Fan uh, on the uh, our uh, uh, AC business. Uh, how do you see the uh, the first quarter has been really great. So how do you see the industry planning in next three quarters? As I, as we understand the uh, inventory with the trade is at uh, uh, literally bare minimum level. So how do you see the uh, next three quarters uh, uh, panning out? Uh, that's say, uh, second question. And the last question from my side is, how do we see the uh, business potential in the uh, other small appliances that we are doing? Because uh, this year itself, we had started Voltas air coolers. So any update on that and uh, in general on the uh, small appliances. So what has been the growth in the business? Yeah, that's it from my side. Thanks. Okay, thank you. So yeah, now, see, especially the AC business, which contributes currently to almost 86 percent plus of our revenue, this has been an exceptional quarter year. But the best thing is, even currently, the market is selling the lowest amount of inventory. The inventory in the market uh, are bare minimum. So the, uh, the forecast for next two quarters, uh, or our order book for next two quarters, is also extremely healthy. So in that sense, we are sitting in a very right position with right capacities and right mix of inventories to cater to the market for the next two, two quarters. And at the same time, and with that, I'd also like to highlight that a lot of concerns around insourcing which were raised last time or last year by most of the analysts and yourself. Those have now been subdued and people realize that the industry is actually sitting on a lower seasonal capacity which is required. And then looking at the market potential and growth which is forecasted over the next three to four years, I mean, uh, we are called to uh, outgrow the market growth. So the, uh, maybe this year the market is uh, uh, estimated to grow at least 25% plus on year on complete year basis, whereas uh, EPEC is definitely going to outgrow the market growth. On the business potential for small domestic appliances, uh, uh, a lot of small domestic appliances are also getting added, and at the same time, the traction and the incentive given by the government in the budget for disposable income to improve uh, consumer goods buying, I think these all are going to help uh, these uh, festivity sales for the small domestic appliances, especially. And we have again a very healthy order book for our current uh, products as well as the newer ones which we are adding, like uh, air fryers and coolers, like you said, which we have already added with one customer. So going forward, we are again expanding customer base for coolers and then especially washing machine, which we uh, are targeting to start by uh, the beginning of third quarter. So we already are in advanced discussion with most of the esteemed clients and we see a very positive attraction there as well. So all this put together, the whole idea is to strengthen our Q2 and Q3 earnings and thereby balance our quarters, I mean, each of the four quarters. Okay, sure, sir. This is uh, very helpful. And uh, once again, congrats for a uh, great set of numbers. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. The next question is from the line of Abhisar Jain from Monarch AIF. Please go ahead. Uh, uh, thank you, sir, and uh, congratulations for a strong, very strong top line growth on both year on year as well as quarter on quarter basis. Uh, I think the traction that you've seen in the AC business is quite heartening. Sir, my question is on the margin front. Uh, so, uh, while we maintain margins on a year on year basis, but uh, sequentially, uh, there is a drop in margins on both gross margin and EBITDA margin basis, uh, despite a very strong top line growth and very strong season uh, that we had this time. So, just wanted to understand that uh, have we, uh, you know, a little bit invested uh, in the in the fixed asset base uh, uh, because we had the CCT plan coming in, or uh, whether uh, there have been a little bit lower margin orders that we have executed and. And hence, uh, how do you see the margin outlook for the whole year and going forward? Thanks, Abhishek. So, yes, on margin front, we have been pressed Q on Q basis. But if you are comparing it with Q4 of uh, last financial year, definitely we, we uh, see a little dip in the uh, material margin as well as the beta margin. So, this is uh, one, this is attributed to the uh, operationalization of 350, wherein now there is an increase in, uh, uh, an absolute amount increase in the uh, manpower cost and the operations cost, definitely that is contributing slightly to it, but more than that, uh, the margins have taken a slight hit on account of the commodities, which saw an, a significant upward trend in April, May, June. So that uh, is something which hit us slightly, but at the same time, since we are in a business wherein we 
commodities get passed on in the next quarter, so we will see the impact of commodities now settling down in Q2 and Q3 onwards. So, so it, it's a recurring effect which gets uh, settled in the next quarter. Sure, sir. And, and hence, sir, the full year outlook for the margins will be uh, in what band, according to you, would we be able to maintain the last year full year level? That, that is what I think I also said in my last earnings call. Yes, this is what the uh, management aspires to, and we are, we are pretty confident we will be able to maintain the uh, margin at similar level. Sure, sir. So, one question on Sri City. Uh, so, uh, I know the plant has uh, got commission very recently in the last two quarters, but uh, at what utilization it is currently running and uh, what is the outlook on on the on the orders from the customer since we have set up such a big facility there? So, we said on uh, Free City, we got operationalized in December only. So, last six months, we have been able to slowly ramp up the production and current utilization levels would be anywhere between 40 to 50 percent during the first year. But at the same time now, the newer lines like the washing machine, uh, we are setting up in uh, City itself, so that, that would be a product expansion at Free City. And the order book now onwards, uh, so a lot of orders for our uh, 10 India customers which are targeting towards South are getting transferred to Free City. So in a phase manner, we will see the uh, utilizations getting ramped up over the next 12 months. So we are pretty sure that we are, next year, same quarter, we will be able to utilize 80-90% of the uh, investments. Right, sir. Ajayi, you had also talked about uh, reducing the concentration of the top five customers in the AC business. And of course, last year we saw a setup of a lot of in-house capacities by a lot of big players, uh, some, something which is now, I think, settling down. So how is the top five share and how is the effort in getting more uh, customers on board in the AC business, if you can throw some light on it? Yeah. On customer concentration, uh, from FY23 to FY24, and now there is, has been a significant improvement. Previously, we had three customers contributing to more than 70% of the sales. Then FY24, we saw almost five customers contributing to 70% of the sales. Now we have almost eight customers contributing to 80% of the sales. So we see a significant in, uh, improvement in the customer mix and concentration. So, so this is one area we are definitely working on and going forward with the expansion of the product portfolio and component business, we see a lot of rationalization happening on that front. Understood, sir. Okay, the last question on the new products. So the uh, pipeline looks really exciting with, with many of those products and you told uh, washing machine uh, you, you should start in Q3. Uh, uh, so sir, what is the uh, overall idea in terms of the percentage share that the non-AC product should have in our portfolio in the next two to three years time and how much visibility do you have on that uh, percentage uh, in, in terms of your dialogues with your customers at this point of time? Uh, currently, uh, the AC, uh, the room AC segment contributes almost 56% plus of our revenue and small domestic appliances to almost 15 odd percent. So going forward, we have categorized washing machine, coolers, and the new products as large home appliances. So large home appliances we see contributing at least 8 to 10% in the next three to four years. And AC, despite growing at the market plus outgrowing the market growth, we will see AC concentration coming down from 86% to maybe less than 70%. Understood, sir. Understood. Yes. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, and best wishes. I'll come back in the queue. Thank you, Vishal. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all the participants, please limit your question to two per participant. If you have a follow-up question, please come back in the queue. The next question is from the line of Yash from Stalin Assets. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you for the opportunity. Um, so I just wanted to understand, uh, you know, as you said that you estimate the industry to grow by 25% this year, right? And given the fact that uh, we have low inventory levels uh, right now uh, for AC as well, so you think we can significantly outgrow the number? You think we can grow 40-50% in revenues this year? What's your internal sort of target? Yeah, yes, definitely that's the outlook we are looking at. And uh, the previous ending call also we have made the similar indication. So at each we are um, we are definitely looking at 45% plus growth for this financial year as compared to last year. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thanks, that's it. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Bhumika Nair 
from the AM Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Good morning, sir, and congratulations on a good set of numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, so my first question is on the AC segment. We've done quite well, uh, and industry is also kind of supported. Um, how would it have been our mix between components and the finished goods if some color can be given on that aspect? Thank you, Bhumika. See, Q1 is predominantly an AC season. So AC definitely, if you look at the Q1 standalone diesel, it will be close to 88%. Whereas small domestic appliances start picking up from Q2 to Q1. So on an annualized basis, uh, we say that it is almost 82 or 80, 82 or 83, 84% for AC. So yeah, for Q1, AC contributes almost 88%. But at the same time, like you rightly said, components is something that is picking up very well. So in value terms, component business is was almost insignificant it last year. We see definitely uh, improvement. In, so even if it grows at 200 percent, in value terms it remains very low. But over like three to four years, we the corporate business is going to contribute significantly. So currently in value terms it is, it is very small, although it, it has grown by maybe 200 percent. Okay. So the other thing was on this acquisition for the motor business. Now uh, you spoke about uh, you know. Uh, getting into other areas of, you know, BLDC for fans, etc. Now, including RAC and fans, etc., do, do they have all the customer approvals uh, in place right now? Yes, yes, yes. So we've already been doing, um, from our test pilot setup in, um, currently in Silvasa, we have already started supplies uh, in the last quarter. So last three to four months, we have done pilot uh, lot supplies to almost all the customers. And we have received extremely good acceptance from the market. And so the market acceptance is received, the product approval is done for both aircon motors as well as the LDC fan motors. So this is why we are now investing in a full fledged plant. And also there is a PLI which is uh, applicable for the power as well. Okay. So, I mean, we have RAC customers on which they're selling outside of us. Are, uh, they will be selling to EPAC and they also have their own RAC customers to that extent, which they are approved. It's a component business, yes. Okay. And uh, from, an, uh, you know, we acquired 25%. Now the RRY still continues to hold another 50%. Is there any thought process to kind of, uh, you know, further uh, do some more acquisition and, you know, kind of complete, make that a 100% subsidy over a period of time? Or is it that we will be capping it at 50% or any thoughts on, you know, where do we want to eventually take the stake to over a period of four, five years? See, uh, this is a very strategic investment, and uh, uh, both the companies, uh, both, both the groups, EPAC as well as RRWL, are strong enough uh, to grow this business on a standalone basis. So, we see a good uh, opportunity to scale up this business to a standalone entity going forward. So, uh, there is no intention to go beyond 50% from either side right now. It's, it's, it's more of a, a strategic investment from both sides where we see opportunities to grow together. Sure. So the second aspect is on the washing machine business where we are entering. Um, you know, are there any anchor customers? How do you see the volume scaling up um, as we move ahead, say, in FI 26, 27, uh, given the fact that there is enough competitive intensity in this business? Bhumika, uh, it is very, um, it is extremely um, important for me to tell that we have very strategically placed ourselves in the washing machine by launching only fully automatic popular washing machines phase one. So with this, we saw a lot of capability gap between the existing Williams audience and the customer requirements. So we have got very good attraction from almost all the top tier customers for uh, popular automatic washing machines which we are launching. And currently with uh, almost three to four of them, we are uh, at a final closure stage wherein the machines are being tested and validated by them and commercial closures has been done. So on the top load, fully automatic, what we started developing, we are on track to start suppliers from the beginning of Q3. At the same time, uh, with this discussion, it has also helped us now to uh, gain customers' confidence to get into a discussion for semi-automatic machines. So for us, semi-automatic washing machine is something which will be follow-through product. With the automatic, we are already now entering most of the uh, market customers' uh, requirements for, for this product. And especially with this investment coming in south, we see a lot of capability gap and capacity which exists in the market. So it is a very strategic investment again, wherein almost all the brand customers have given a lot of positive outlook and confidence to us. 
sure, sir. And uh, the last question is on the interest cost, which kind of saw increase both on YOI and the QOQ basis. So if you can just talk about, you know, if there's been any increase in the working capital, what are our debt levels versus the FI24 levels, et cetera? On interest cost side, yes, there has been an uh, increase as compared to the previous quarter, uh, the Q4 of the last year. Uh, so it's more because of uh, one, we, we had substantially a uh, 77% increase in revenues, and uh, uh, so, so, so that's one primary reason which has led to this. It is the increased revenue on a quarterly basis which is uh, attributing to this. So At the this same time, uh, let me also um, uh, highlight that uh, uh, the working capital deal has actually reduced from 45 days in Q4 to 41 days in this quarter. So there is a reduction, actually reduction in the working capital deal. The absolute value increase is only a reflection of the uh, revenue. So if Rajiv, you can give the uh, debt numbers uh, at the end of the quarter, it will be useful. Uh, we thought gross debt uh, as a June is around uh, 370 odd crore, gross debt. Okay, okay. Thank you, sir. I'll come back in the queue. Uh, wishing you all the best. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Swetcha Jain from Whitestone Financial Advisors. Please go ahead. We have lost the connect. We have lost the connection for the current participant, and we we are moving on to the next participant. The next question is from the line of Pranav from PINC Wealth Advisors. Please go ahead. Yeah, hello, sir. I just had a couple of questions. Uh, first would be, what would be our cash conversion cycle? It's forty-one days. Forty-one days. And okay, got it. Uh, and uh, what would be our fixed asset turnover ratio? 2.5. Uh, 2.5 for this quarter. For this quarter. Okay. And sir, uh, uh, as we go forward, we are sort of what I'm uh, understood is that we have uh, want uh, to have a better product mix, right? We just don't want ACs to be our main component, so we should be moving our. Uh, to other products as well. So can we expect some margin improvement as we move from AC or is uh, the AC business where the margins are higher? If you could just sort of uh, help me out there. On margin mix, yes, uh, the margin levels are different for different products. So currently, um, we see uh, that the component business as we grow, the margins will definitely uh, improve. And at the same time, the newer segments which we are entering into, uh, again, the idea is the same that we want to capitalize on the margin improvements. So, yes, uh, this is why we are looking at uh, uh, optimizing our product mix and uh, rather improving the overall utilization of the cap uh, manufacturing capabilities. And uh, at the current capacity, sir, uh, could you just give a rough outlook of uh, what would be our current utilization? Because of AC, the seasonal capacity utilization, like for Q1, it would be almost close to 95% plus for the AC business. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, having said that, Q2 and Q3 is the two quarters where the capacity utilization especially dropped significantly. And hence, our uh, efforts to increase, improve, introduce these products, uh, the small domestic appliances and the larger appliances like washing machines and all that we're talking about. So that's an uh, effort in the direction to improve the capacity utilization during, especially during Q2 and Q3. So the that effort is to actually improve the utilization in 2023. 2 and we have an order book for these items? Yes, yes, yes. So the order book is extremely healthy and this is why we, we have shared the numbers for the entire year at almost 45% growth. Got it, sir. Thank you so much and best of luck, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Hitain Boricha from Sequent Investments. Please go ahead. Good morning, sir. So my question is on the PLI benefits. Can we throw what was the PLI benefits in uh, current quarter? And maybe also what are we expecting in this full year? Okay. Yeah. So if we, uh, for this uh, for the financial year 24-25, the total outlay for uh, the expected uh, PLI incentive is going to be 37.5 crores. Out of which 14.5, roughly 14.5 crores is something which has been occurred in Q1 itself. And the balance mm -hmm. is equal in the subsequent three quarters. So this 14.5 is indicated in the sales itself, right, sir? 
And my second question is on the debt, sir. As you mentioned, uh, finance cost has gone up in terms of sales. So uh, we are expecting, uh, assuming the sales will come down in Q2 and Q3 because of weak quarter. So a finance cost will also come down. So what will be a finance cost for FI25? So the finance cost uh, in value terms is going to reduce in Q2 and Q3, but as a percentage mm-hmm. of sales, it's limited, it is more or less a standard. So as a percentage of sales, there is no increase in uh, the finance cost. So if you can like give the in, sorry. Uh, sorry, please come again. It will be around 40 to 45 crore around for the full year basis. Because the, in the first quarter, the sales has been around, you see, around 750 crore. This is why you are seeing that the finance cost has gone up in the current quarter. As you have mentioned rightly, in the current second and third quarter, it, there will be a lower sale as per the business, uh, and the finance cost will definitely come down. Uh-huh. Because the amount of the discounting gets reduced uh, during the second quarter and the third quarter. And the finance cost will also come down. And so my final question is on the gross. She bullet a hat. Hello. Jamie, apla call. Hold what? Hello. Yes. Hello. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. And so my final question is on the gross block. So I, uh, what is our current gross block after the commercialization of uh, Shri City? Uh, it is roughly around 800 uh, crores of gross block uh, uh, as on uh, June. As on June. And we can do an asset PO of around 2.5x on this, right? Yes, 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 yes. Okay, understood. That's all from my side, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Itin. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Swetra Jane. From Whitestone Financial Advisor. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Am I audible? Ma'am, may I request you to please use your handset? Yeah. Hi, sir. Am I audible now? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so most of my questions have been uh, asked. I just have few questions. I just wanted to know the Shri Sati plant. Uh, no, it's right now at 45% capacity. So what kind of uh, revenue can we expect from this plant uh, at a full capacity? And what kind of capex have we done uh, for this plan, sir? Yeah. So, free city, we have created a capacity of almost 1.2 million units. So, it is uh, roughly 6 lakhs of outdoor units and 6 lakhs of indoor units. That's the capacity we created in free city, which can roughly give a revenue or a top line of uh, 600 to 700 crores uh, with the current capex. Okay, okay. And this is... We are adding washing machine and other products to it and the component Mm -hmm. business. So we can gradually ramp it up to 20,000 dollars crores in the next two years. Okay, okay, okay. And so would you be able to give, uh, you know, some order book number? Would you be able to quantify the order book in the AC and non-AC? Ms. Jen, uh, let's put it in the the year and number we are looking at is almost 40 to 50 percent growth. So, which means with 750 already achieved, we are looking at close to anywhere between uh, 20, 20, 100 plus 50 odd crores of uh, revenue in the entire year. Right, right, right. Okay. So, any new capex that we are planning for this year? So, uh, we, uh, as per our annual business plan, we are not looking at any significant investment except for the washing machine lines which we are putting up in some bit of investment. So, our, our um, uh, approved budget for KPEX this year is approximately 50 to 60 odd crores. Okay, okay. And so, just one last question. This 40-45% growth in revenue that, that you're guiding for, uh, this would be uh, on an overall basis, right? Not just the AC, right? So this is overall basis and all organic growth groups we are talking about. So we are not uh, considering any organic growth theory. Okay, okay, okay. Fair enough, sir. So thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. James. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Tushar Sarda from Athena Investments. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. 
I wanted to know about your gross margins. Uh, for the current quarter, they seem to be around 14%, whereas last quarter was 18%. So, uh, you know, if you can throw a little bit light on it. And you also mentioned that sales includes incentives. So, without incentives, probably the margins are uh, even lower. So, so yeah, yeah, Tisha, thank you. So, I think we already answered this question. Uh, yes. Uh, if we are comparing it to Q4, our margins were 18 odd percent compared to 14 percent this quarter. On a Q1, uh, why and why this is? Q1 last year was also similar at 14 odd percent. So uh, there has not been a dip, but yes, at the same time, there is an impact of commodities. Like I said, so there is almost a two two and a half percent impact of commodities itself, since uh, especially copper uh, zoomed in May June. So that is something which has impacted our margins uh, for the PV last quarter. Uh, and as for our uh, agreed pricing method with our customers, this gets passed on in the next quarter. So we will see the margins for this two uh, two and two three getting improved. Uh, basically, because of this. Okay. And so, for the full year, what should one model uh, the margin for gross margin? So, so, on the full year basis, we are looking at maintaining a similar margin as uh, to uh, as uh, Okay, so sixteen percent. Fifteen, fifteen percent plus minus twenty point five is something what was achieved last year, and we are looking to maintain similar kind of margins. Okay, oh, thank you, thank you. Very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vedant Sarda, who is an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, hello. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, what would be the split for the FI25 and FI26 for H1 and H2? Okay. Typically, uh, so, so this is, I think, basically, talk historically, H1 and H2 is almost equal. So, it is maybe like, uh, it, it is almost equal. H1 and H2 are almost equal uh, historically. So, so, there is no uh, significant gap between revenues in H1 and H2. Okay. And, uh, yeah, yes. H2 is actually comparatively slightly. Um, uh, it's comparatively better, so let, let, I'll answer it this way. H1 will be 45 percent, H2 will be 55 percent. This is what has been historically. Okay, thank you. All the best for your next quarter. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Tanay Roop Chatterjee from Berman Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks. Uh, am I audible? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I have only one question. Uh, sir, so this time in summer, uh, so I am a resident of Delhi, and at least for me, uh, the heat wave this time was sort of unprecedented, right? Uh, what that would also mean is that uh, in a normal base case scenario, we would not expect that to happen every year, right? Now, uh, industry has increased by 40 50 percent, I think, in the summer season this year. Everyone has reported blockbuster growth and what has also happened is the insourcing uh, already started before that so brands have started setting up the capacity and probably some are still left to you know uh, ramp it up and then the contract manufacturers have also expanded their capacity uh, especially because of the shortage seen uh, in inventory and production this season right now uh, I'm just trying to think how does the thought process happen uh, because this is a call between a short term potential oversupply situation next year versus a long term strategy call to have the capacity in place, right? So because next year one would expect that probably the industry would not have any growth or maybe a slight growth on this high base, right? Because a lot of first time buyers already have put in ACs in their homes. So how do you think about, uh, do you see a oversupply situation next year because everyone has come up with capacity as a sort of a knee jerk reaction, right? So uh, how do you see this? I may be completely wrong, but I just wanted to hear your thoughts. Yeah, so Mr. Chatterjee, yes, um, this uh, year we have seen um, we have seen significant growth across brands and across all all OEMs and ODMs, attributing to the uh, heat wave. Yes, so this is why uh, we are seeing that this 25 percent growth is something unprecedented, and 
uh, I mean, will we achieve this repeat? But then uh, we, we at the same time don't expect a similar 25% uh, uh, growth for the next year. You are right in that to that extent. But at the nominal growth of 12 to 15 odd percent year on year, not just because of the heat wave, but because of the increased buying powers, because of the current penetration levels are very low in India. So our potential to grow here is not because of the heat wave or just this. Uh, at a global average of 42% penetration, the India is just at 8%, which means we have a long way to go. So, uh, on, on the long term, because if you see the market is going to double every uh, four to five years. And there has been a very detailed report presented by BCG and other uh, reputed uh, consultants to the government of India, to the industry association at all levels. So, uh, based, on, based on the projections given by the government itself, the market is looking from current 10 million to become almost uh, 24 million by FY28-29 and this additional exports the market is uh, the India potential looks to uh, around 40 million by 28-29. Uh, so that is the kind of potential the market is talking about and looking at and hence uh, there is no uh, excess capacity, let's put it this way, uh, the same fear which was uh, uh, given last year that uh, is there an excess capacity in the market has come flat now and people see that there is a short, shortfall of capacity. So we see that this uh, the growth for AC especially will continue over like 8 to 10 years definitely because we are, we are really sitting in a very low penetration level. Gold, uh, thanks a lot. All the best. Uh, that's it. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shraddha Kapadia from Share India. Please go ahead. Hello, am I audible? Yes, ma'am, you're audible. Okay, so I just had one question. So, like you said, only washing machine is yet to start, or are there any other products also which are yet to start? And what would be the full potential which we can expect uh, for the upcoming products to contribute to our revenue? So, Shuddha, uh, we are continuously expanding our public portfolio both for larger appliances as well as small domestic appliances. So for the larger appliances, the washing machine is something which is now the development is complete and we are looking to launch in Q3. Uh, similarly, for small domestic appliances, uh, a set of products like uh, uh, air fryers, uh, air dryers and others have been developed and if you are looking, looking at to launch this year. So it is a continuous process. Again, next year we are evaluating certain products to develop for next year. So that, that's a continuous exercise and this is why we have a high focus on our R&D uh, capabilities and we are continuously expanding our R&D team. So, so this is a continuous exercise and our journey would continue to introduce newer products to the market every year. Whereby we can utilize our current capabilities and our manufacturing capacities. Right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will take that as the last question. I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Thank you all for participating in the ending stone call today. I hope you've been able to answer your questions satisfactorily. If you have any further questions or would like to know more about the company, please reach, reach out to our IR managers at Wellerum Advisors. Thank you so much. On behalf of JM Financials, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.